Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. The two brush sets that are used in this tutorial are in the links in the description. Feel free to download them and pause this video at any time. Once downloaded, they'll be in your downloads folder. Here I have them on the desktop for easy viewing. Simply double click the first set, the character brushes. It'll automatically create a folder within Photoshop where you'll see all the brushes that it contains. The main brush used in this one that we'll be using today is the Ragged Hard Round Brush. Simply open the next set, which is for the hair. And you'll see it creates another folder similar with all the brushes inside. And a side note regarding Photoshop brushes. Don't ever feel the need that you have to buy them in order to get better because there are so many free resources out there you don't have to buy any of them to improve your skill set because realistically you have to improve yourself as an artist and not be so dependent upon brushes. Yes, they help out, but don't feel that you have to get a certain brush set in order to go to the next level in your artistic abilities. The way I begin all my sketches is I create a light gray background, then create a new layer that I'll do the beginning sketch. You'll see I sped this up right here because if I kept this at real time, this video would be extremely long. And the brush that I'm using here, like I said in the beginning, is the Ragged Hard Round Brush. It's my go-to brush where I sketch and essentially build and paint and for the most part do almost everything with this one brush. When doing the sketch, I always lower the opacity of it as to not create such dark lines and just from that build the sketch up because every time you apply the pen to the screen it then darkens the actual lines as if you're really sketching with the pencil so to say and the way i personally do it is my very first sketch is a very rough sketch very loose it's not very precise it's more so just meant to get a general layout of what i'm drawing but I always begin the same with a circle and with referencing from that, the eyes, the nose, the ears, and just trying to figure out um, the general layout of it. So that's why this part is very rough. It's not very uh, detailed. It's more so just meant to get the layout. And then once I get the layout that I like to the point where it's good enough, I then lower the opacity, make it blue, and then above it, this is where the actual sketch begins. And this phase, the second phase of the sketch, is where I spend a little bit more time adding the details, refining it, just spending a little bit more time on all the line work, just making sure, adjusting and fixing the different parts of the sketch because since the first one was more so just for the structure of it, to get the kind of layout of what I was looking for, this one, the second phase, is where all the refining happens, where I begin to then add the details, fix the eyes. My tendency is always to begin with the eyes and then go from the eyes to the nose and then just work my way outward. Here I just continue to add the detail, refining the ear, the way his earlobe is, and just adding all the lines that need to be added and just refining the actual structure of it. The one thing when it comes to digital drawing is the fact that it's very easy to edit, modify, skew. For better or for worse, it's can create bad habits because you can so easily modify things where you don't have to be as precise as right there I adjusted the hair. Because my style isn't like inking or line work, all these sketches ultimately are just a guide that I ultimately just digitally paint on a separate layer. So that's why all my sketches are never that refined. Once I get my sketch to a point where I'm happy with it, where I can then go to the third phase, you could say, of actually digitally painting it. I then create a new layer and with the light gray, use the standard hard round brush and begin to just create an actual layer of just all the gray, which from that point, I'll then build and digitally paint. Once I'm there at the last sketch, I lower the opacity, make it blue and then go back to the actual that light gray base layer and using the ragged hard round brush. From there, I then begin to digitally paint. And you're probably wondering what are those two arrows for? When you draw, 
one of the first things you have to do is identify where the main light source is at, meaning at what point is the light the strongest at and whatever is behind it, shadows are created. Whatever is covering that main light source, shadows are created. And so whatever is hit with the main light source, it's the lightest part, which then follows by shadows and typically at the very opposite end, what's called rim light or backlight is whatever light is reflected off what's behind it slightly lightens up the very back of the subject. In this case, Vegeta, the back of his hair slightly and his neck, etc. So whenever you're trying to create depth or semi-realism or realism, you have to understand highlights and shadows. The light is mainly hitting his forehead and the front of his face. So because of that, you then have to, with the use of the arrows, once you get to a point where you identify, understand the structure of what you're drawing, you won't need any of these arrows. But at the very beginning, I find it's very helpful for people to keep a constant reminder of where the light is mainly hitting. So you could look at it and say, the arrow, the light is hitting this part of Vegeta. So if it hits this part of Vegeta, then whatever is slightly behind it will be darker. Whatever is closer to it is lighter. In his shoulders, the front of it will be lighter. The back of it will be darker. The front of his face is lighter. His neck, etc., will be darker because his face creates that shadow. It's a helpful reminder with the arrows of where highlights and shadows are. And the very beginning here, it's more so just a generic blocking of the highlights and the shadows. Like I said, I tend to start with shadows just to create that sense of depth. It's more so just blocking them in at this moment, is figuring out what is mainly hit by the light source, what is in the shadow area. It's not meant to be detailed at this moment. It's more so just like a process. And that's one thing for my style personally is everything is a process. And then when it comes to drawing Vegeta's hair, I typically create a new layer just for the hair, just so when I add the hair strands, I just erase any ones that go too far over his ears or his face. Here you notice that I'm creating a general base gray area that from this I'll then add all the details and all the hair strands. What you want to do is go to the hairbrush number one in the set you downloaded, lower the opacity and the flow. I do this so then I can slowly add into the darkness and the shadows and the highlights of the hairs. Like in my style, I basically build brush by brush to create the effect that I'm making. Always keep it in mind, those two arrows, what the main light source is. So what's in front that touches that will be lighter. Whatever is behind it or near the back will cast a shadow. So in all these things you see here, I'm creating and adding to the actual hair to the point where it's just good enough. It's never too detailed here because like I said, my tendency is always to then fix it and do it all in color. And then right here, I'm just cleaning up the edges. Keep in mind that this part doesn't have to be exactly perfect because it never will be because I'll correct all the edges in color at the very end just to clean everything up. And then once that's done, I then begin to go back to adding the highlights and shadows and refining it on Vegeta's face. And one thing I want to keep in mind is when doing this, all of this is done right here on his face with that ragged hard round brush. You notice I never use the soft opacity brush at this point. A uh, tendency I notice I see a lot of uh, digital illustrations is the use of the soft opacity brush and having the softness at zero, the hardness at zero. And so the effect that is created is an airbrush looking effect where everything blends too perfectly in with each other. The reason why I use the ragged hard round brush and lower the opacity and flow is so it creates texture. I can't stress enough about the importance of creating texture because without the texture, it then looks like an airbrush, it looks fake, it doesn't look right. So by using the ragged hard round brush or any texture type of brush, when understanding highlights and shadows, it then makes whatever it is you're digitally painting that much more realistic, semi-realistic, makes it pop that much more and have more depth to it because the textures are there. Don't be afraid of textures. Don't be afraid of creating textures. 
because that will change your digital painting from what it is to literally going to the next level. Now on to the biggest question I always get. How do you go from grayscale to color? You can see the method that I choose to use is what's called gradient maps. You're probably wondering what the heck is a gradient map. You see here I have pre-saved gradient maps or colors that I use when I digitally paint. But obviously that won't help you one bit because you don't have any. So how do you use a gradient map? A gradient map essentially changes all the colors underneath it that are white, grays to blacks to whatever colors you pick. So in this one here for Vegeta, the highlight, the lightest part where the white is underneath him, I made it a yellow. From that, made it a tan to a darker brown. And once I get to a point where I'm okay with it, I then pick a white brush and then color in on the mask layer where that's at to then add in the rest of his skin. So you can see right here, what was once white and grays now has color. But once I filled in his skin, I wasn't liking on how the color looked. So with ease, you can go back to the gradient map and adjust the colors accordingly to however you seem fit. And that's one of the quick, easy ways of adjusting colors with using gradient maps is you can change the colors to however you want, as quickly as you want, to whatever degree you want. Within reason, obviously. If you find yourself um, having difficulty picking colors, feel free to uh, eyedrop tool, a reference image you might be using of Vegeta, an example here, so you can kind of get colors to base off of if you need to, because there's nothing wrong with using that to help you out. Here, I'm now beginning to add the hair. You can see I had an existing red gradient map there, but like before, that doesn't help you. So here, I'm just manually picking out the colors from light to dark, from pink to reds to dark reds to figure out his hair color and just adjusting the slider accordingly to get to a point where it's okay. Like I said, for the most part, I digitally paint his hair um, all in color. This is more so just meant to get a, a, a starting point or just to get the overall look of how the hair is in this color. Here I'm adding it to the eyebrows and now I'm just starting to erase the outer parts that don't need to be there anymore. And just like before, repeating the same process, picking different blues to pick the colors for his armor, from the light to the medium to the darks, adjusting the sliders accordingly to get to a color that I feel is correct at the moment. And then with the white brush, then color in on the mask, only the parts that will affect the colors underneath to the point where I'm happy with it. And I continue that process to every element that needs color that is on Vegeta here. The yellows to the oranges to the browns and only color it in where it needs to be at. And this is the last part or piece that needs to have color. I just added a slight blue hint to it so it better complements the actual drawing as a whole and just add it into the part that only obviously gets affected by it. And as you can see, when it comes to grading maps, it's the same process, it's just different colors, different places, and you can modify and change them accordingly. But this is the method I use to start off all my colors for all my pieces. Once all the basic coloring has been done, from this point on, I digitally paint all in color. So with the hairbrush set that you downloaded, select hairbrush number two, and then select a light pink. And keeping in mind the main light source, the two arrows that were there earlier, I begin to manually add in the lighter strands of hair. The reason I choose to mainly paint in hair and color is because it's a lot easier and quicker to digitally paint different hair strand colors randomly than try to knock it all out with gradient maps. So here I'm just eye dropping different parts of the hair and adding it to make it look more fuller. Keeping in mind, like I said, where the main light source is at, those two arrows that were there earlier, and just manually begin to add in hair. When drawing hair is to keep in mind the direction in which the hair is going. So you know 
which way and how to draw the strands of hair, the lighter shades, the darker shades, pretty much all the different shades of the hair in the direction that it needs to go. Then using a light pink at the very top layer, I add the final highlights to the, all the hair strands. So keeping in mind where the main light source is at, I just continue to add random highlights throughout and putting a few random ones in to make it look semi-realistic. And here I'm just fixing up and cleaning up the edges to make sure everything is nice and refined while adjusting the blue in his suit. Now a quick way to add a background is in the character brush set that you downloaded, select the dirt brush, hit F5 for a Mac, which opens the brush settings, go to shape dynamics and under angle jitter, increase it to 100. So by doing that, when you brush now, the brush actually moves in random directions. So it doesn't look like the exact same brush is repeating itself over and over again. It creates a sense of randomness. And here I just pick different shades of blue with that same dirt brush. And you can see I'm just adding very quickly a background that has texture. And then a quick way to make your backgrounds a little bit more exciting is have it go from one color to another. Here I'm going from light blue to a darker blue. And the light blue I just put as a soft light so that it blends nicely between the two different colors. And as we come to a close of this Vegeta drawing, here I'm just adding a little bit more color to the edges because they're a little bit too light and blend in a little bit too much with the background. And here is the finished piece of Vegeta as Super Saiyan God. So tell me, what do you guys think? Is there something in this video that you want me to go more in depth about in a future video? If there is, comment down below. If you like this video, why don't you give it a thumbs up? If you're new here, why don't you consider hitting that subscribe button so you never miss any new content that I post every single week. I will be posting more how to's, more tutorials in the future. And until the next drawing guys, goodbye.